He was the voice of generation and the inspiration behind countless bands but Kurt Cobain was his own harshest critic. The Nirvana frontman took his own life aged just 27. When his lifeless body was found at his Seattle home on April 8, 1994, his millions of fans were inconsolable. The troubled musician has long been regarded as one of the most influential figures in alternative music and he and Nirvana spawned the grunge phenomenon. Heavily influenced by the Beatles, Nirvana's second album Nevermind shot them to international. Fame with the lead single, Smells Like Teen Spirit, becoming the anthem for Generation X. It has gone on to sell more than 30 million copies worldwide, with Nirvana notching up sales of 75 million records throughout their career. But shy and sensitive Cobain struggled with the huge fame that came with being the frontman of one of the biggest bands in the world. He suffered from depression and battled heroin addiction in the latter years of his life, despite seemingly finding happiness with fellow musician, Courtney Love, and becoming father to his adored daughter, Frances Bean. On April 5, 1994, Cobain made the heartbreaking decision to end his life. His body was found three days later by an electrician, who was at the home to install security system. Two days later, seven thousands mourners attended public vigil in his hometown of Seattle and his devastated widow read out extracts of his suicide note, Dave Grohl, who was Nirvana's drummer before he went on to form the Foo Fighters, said at the time, Grohl said that the news of Cobain's death was probably the worst thing that has happened to me in my life. Remember the day after that woke up and was heartbroken that he was gone? Just felt like, okay, so get to wake up today and have another day and he doesn't. Cobain's spiral into the world of drug addiction started when he was just 13 and tried cannabis for the first time. He experimented with harder drugs and booze and tried heroin for the first time when he was 19 and four years later was full-blown addict. Cobain insisted he was using the drug to self-medicate an undiagnosed stomach. Problem that caused him considerable pain. And when he met Love the pair bonded over their drug use she was famously quoted in Vanity Fair as saying she had used heroin early in her pregnancy. When the couple's baby, Francis Bean, arrived the couple were hounded into revealing whether or not their little girl was born addicted to the drug. Love insisted she was Ms. quoted in the piece. Then, in 1993, before Gig Cobain overdosed on heroin, rather than call an ambulance his wife injected him with naloxone, medication used to block to effects of drugs, and he came round. He took to the stage as if nothing had happened but things were about to take very dark turn. While Nirvana were touring in Germany, Cobain was struck down with bronchitis and severe laryngitis and he flew to Rome for treatment, where he was met by his wife. The following day, March 4, Love woke up to find her husband overdosed on champagne and rehypnol. She has claimed this was his first attempt to end his life. After five days in hospital Cobain was discharged and flew home to Seattle. Just over a week later, Love called police as Cobain was suicidal and had locked himself in room with gun. Officers seized several guns and bottle of pills from the troubled singer, who reassured officers that he wasn't planning on taking his own life and had locked himself in the room to hide from his wife. Fearful for her husband's mental state and worried about his drug addiction Love arranged an intervention with some of his closest friends, fellow musicians and his record company. For hours he refused to seek help. At rehab, throwing insults at the group gathered at his home and even locking himself on bedroom. But by the end of the day, he had agreed that rehab was the only way forward and checked into the Exodus Recovery Center in Los Angeles on March 30, 1994. Cobain never told staff there or his counselors that he had battled depression or had previously tried to take his own life. He did open up about his personal problems and drug abuse and when friends visited him they said there was no indication he was suicidal. Cobain was also visited by his baby daughter who he spent time playing with this as the last time he would ever see his beloved little girl. On April he said he was going outside for cigarette but scaled the six-foot fence surrounding the center something he had earlier joked would be stupid thing to do and fled. The rock star got in cab and raced to Los Angeles airport before boarding flight back to his hometown of Seattle. Cobain was sitting close to Duff McKagan, the bassist from Guns Roses. The pair weren't friends, in fact Cobain disliked the band especially lead singer, Axl Rose. But McKagan said the Nirvana frontman seemed happy to see him. 
During the flight McKagan began to have chilling premonition something was very wrong with Cobain. He later said, knew from all of my instincts that something was wrong. His escape from rehab meant none of Cobain's family and friends knew where he was but he was spotted around Seattle several times on April and 3. Desperate, his wife Love hired private detective on April to find her husband and on April with him still. Missing Enarvana pulled out of the Lollapalooza festival. Tragically, his body was found the following day and it didn't come as total surprise to those who knew him best. Grohl has since admitted that he always knew Cobain would die young, explaining, Sometimes you just can't save someone from themselves and in some ways, you kind of prepare yourself emotionally for that to be reality. Dave Reed, who for short time was Cobain's foster father, added, He had the desperation, not the courage, to be himself. Once you do that, you can't go wrong, because you can't make any mistakes when people love you for being yourself. But for Kurt, it didn't matter that other people loved him. He simply didn't love himself enough.